Hi guys, good to have you join us on our Splendor Show today. Today we are actually starting with our exclusive interview. Recently, the Ethiopian team briefed journalists in Abuja that talks are on the way with the Nigerian government to re-establish a more stronger national career that will satisfy the demand of both local and international markets. This is a very good one coming from international community. Let's hear more from them and I'll be right back. Why I'm here, um, we've been discussing and exploring possibilities to uh, establish or support a strong airline in Nigeria. I don't mean that there is no strong airline in Nigeria, but an, air, an airline that we wanted to, 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 uh, to be. Uh, an airline which can satisfy the demand of the domestic market, of the regional market, and the international market. Nigeria is a very large country, not only by land mass, but also the largest population and uh, uh, Nigerians travel a lot, highly educated people. I remember when during my time in New York, uh, the best doctors in New York are Nigerians. Uh, so, um, but unfortunately, since the demise of uh, Nigeria Airways, um, uh, we are unfortunate that we don't have a strong career. So uh, this concern is part of a continental concern because in Africa, uh, foreign carriers, non-African carriers have the biggest share. So um, it's around 80 to 20. 80% 80 of the traffic between Africa and the rest of the world is carried by non-African carriers foreign carriers. The indigenous homegrown carriers have only 20% of the market. This is not fair. And it used to be 60% some 20 years ago. And now it was coming down. So it's still coming down. So we are also threatened because all of us in Africa are only 20% of the market. So in a, in a, in a, in a declining trend, tomorrow there is a possibility that the market share can be zero. So they will wipe us, all of us. So we have to make sure that we work together with all African countries to ensure that there are strong, homegrown, indigenous African carriers. As you know, um, Nigeria is an important market for us. It's not the most profitable, but uh, uh, an important market because there is this mis uh, misconception that I want to take advantage of uh, clarifying. Um, you know, we fly to Lagos and Abuja uh, daily. These are trunk routes. We have very good traffic, uh, but at the same time, we also fly to Kano, and in Nugu, where we don't make uh, uh, money, we lose money. And uh, those two uh, stations lose around three million per annum every year. Uh, but overall, it's an important market for us. Uh, as you know, in Nugu, we are the only international airline. So it's a very challenging uh, route for us. Uh, we fly three times a week, sometimes four times a week. Uh, we all remember when Southwest Airlines was established some 40 years ago. Uh, it was competing with buses in the, in the state of Texas. So it stimulated air transport. It enabled more and more people to afford uh, air transport. So 
here in Africa, there are people who travel between countries and within countries, but they cannot afford air transport. And air transport is also not readily available, not readily accessible for the average person. So we want to make sure that whatever we have in the US and uh, in Europe uh, can be done here in Africa. So right now it's a vicious circle. People are not traveling as many as we want, so the volume is not there. Why? Because the price is very high. Why is the price very high? One, cost of infrastructure is very high, taxes are very high, and fuel is very high, and tax on fuel is very high. So, uh, and airlines do, are not able to fly from point A to point B within the continent without any restriction. So these are the uh, obstacles. Uh, the single African air transport market is going to resolve this because at least airlines will be able to fly from point A to point B within the continent without any restriction. Uh, so it will be a single uh, uh, market. And then the second uh, um, obstacle will be to make air transport as, as affordable as possible for the average person in the continent. Welcome back. You have heard the good news from the Ethiopia management team about bringing back our Nigerian Airways. And I'm sure everybody will be also happy. Up next on our show is the 22nd Annual General Meeting and Election of Federation of Tourism Associations of Nigeria, EFTN. The associations believe in this slogan, United We Stand and Divided We Fall. Nobody wants to fall, everybody wants to unite, especially the stakeholders in tourism industry. No wonder the election went very peaceful. And we also spoke with some of the stakeholders during the election. Let's hear what they have to say, and I'll be right back. Tourism is about leaving your usual place to another place for purposes of leisure. And nobody leaves his home or her home just for no reason. So be that as it may, uh, we need to concentrate on building more uh, tourism destinations where people could go, enjoy themselves, and appreciate the work of nature or work of mankind. So Nigeria tourism products should be developed, variety should be provided to stimulate people traveling from one part of Nigeria to another, even before talking about international tourists. Why we had to choose this topic is because of the importance of research and advocacy towards tourism development. Like you have rightly heard from our speaker, who has spoken very well on the importance of research and advocacy towards the development of any tourism destination in the world, and with particular reference to Africa. It became imperative for us to, as an association, look at ways, how do we, with the various associations working together with us, you know, develop tourism in Nigeria. And we felt the only way we can be able to do that is when we have good data, because there's no way you can be able to plan for now and the future if you have, don't have the data. So it's as a result of that that we said we have to get somebody to speak to us on the importance of data and advocacy, which is a tool that can lead to tourism development, especially sustainable tourism that can stand the test of time. Yeah, the point is that you cannot advocate for anything if you had not first acquired the information. And that the kind of advocacy that had worked, I have seen work in different parts of Africa, that is built on facts. If we want to say we need an airport with a longer runway, can we justify it by saying we have 20 million people who come to Nigeria, so we need higher capacity aircraft, which is like an A380. This higher capacity aircraft will need a 3.5 kilometer runway. I'm using facts now to advocate for the improvement of our airport. So you cannot make any successful advocacy in tourism without having research and facts behind it. Uh, tourism Associations of Nigeria, FM. And I will serve the Federation of Tourism Associations of Nigeria.
with all my heart, with all my heart and tenaciously oppose the constitution of Elton without fear of favor. Without fear of favor. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome back. All oh, what we're saying is tourism. And we can't stop talking about tourism because we are beautiful people. That's how far we can go for now. Do join us again next time for another exciting episode. I'm Glory Okun. Bye for now.